so we're really thrilled to have the opportunity to find out a little bit more about uh, the beginnings, your beginnings, and how you got started. So if you don't mind, I'd like to take you back to 1949 uh, and this article that came out in Fortune magazine called uh, Big Money in Boston. Can you uh, tell us a bit about that and uh, how that influenced you? Uh, sure, and at first it was one of the great breaks of my lifetime, no question about that. Uh, I was in Firestone Library at Princeton, just opened, brand new beautiful library. And I can remember the sun coming in over my shoulder, and I can remember opening Fortune magazine at a time when December of 1949, and when one was thinking about one's senior thesis. Uh, I was going to graduate in 1951, you can't start too early at all. And uh, I was a very contrarian young thinker, if thinker is a good word, and uh, I'm very skeptical of everything. Any knowledge that was delivered, I said, wait a minute, <laughs> you know, let's take a really close look at that. Uh, and uh, so I didn't, I was a contrarian. I wanted to write a thesis on, on, a, on a subject that nobody had ever written on before. Uh, and I opened Fortune magazine, and there is Big Money in Boston, the name of the article about Mass Investors Trust, um, the oldest, the largest, and perhaps importantly, compared to what happened later on, the lowest cost mm -hmm. fund in the field, a very diversified, basically S&P 500-like portfolio, not any magic there. And uh, the industry was described as tiny but contentious. Its total assets were around two or two and a half billion. And I thought, well, by God, I'm tiny and I'm contentious. <laughs> and no one's ever written on this before that I knew of. There may have been something later, but I have never seen it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I picked on the spot in the library that topic for my thesis, hmm. the open-end investment company or the mutual fund. And uh, there was very, very little research uh, available on it, very little, very few articles, some in the, in the legal journals uh, about the value of diversification for estates and things like that. And uh, then we had uh, things like um, critical articles, article from the head of the SEC, chairman of the SEC, saying mutual funds were going to change the marketplace mm -hmm. at this tiny size. And they haven't done it yet, but maybe they will someday. Uh, but there it was. I wrote to the Investment Company Institute, then known as the National Association of Investment Companies, and asked them for the data that they had. And uh, seven months later, I got a reply. Mm -hmm. It was just a one-man shop. <laughs> and he finally got around mm -hmm. to me. I think it took seven months. and. So the ambit of my research was going to be very limited. Mm -hmm. uh, so I made it as deep as I could. I got all these old Wiesenberger so-called books that were historically coming out every year and looked into the industry and made some opinions about it and uh, read everything I could find from the hearings to the 1940 Act, Investment Company Act of 1940, which was only at that point nine years old. And uh, it seems amazing to me. And I was on my way. The thesis is just an extraordinary volume that I would recommend everybody read uh, because I, I was blown away by some of the things that you yeah. covered. So I want to mention a couple of things about the thesis. First of all, you began as a sophomore in terms of doing your research and the fact that you actually covered so many different aspects of open-end funds. And we had a lot of data on turnover and all those kind of things. Mutual fund turnover was Portfolio turnover is about the same as the market. But poor little mutual funds were 1% of the market then. They weren't going to do very much. Mm -hmm. And now mutual funds are, I guess, 25, 30% of the market. Mm -hmm. And uh, But that gets anticipating where we go from here. Um, if mutual fund industry today was the same way it was when I wrote the thesis or thereafter, it would all be actively managed funds. Mm -hmm. That was the business. Right. And uh, it was all in those days, this is a very important thing that happened, uh, it was very diversified. Mm -hmm. Just about every major fund looked like the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Mm. And you could look at the volatility. Wiesenberger would score that in his annual volumes. And you could find a couple of funds that were maybe 7% more volatile. More, and you could find some funds that were 10% less volatile. Mm -hmm. But the idea of 30% more volatile, 30% less volatile is one there. Except balanced funds, different case, of course. They were just as volatile as they were supposed to be. That is two-thirds of the volatility of the market. So um, 
it, 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 all those things developed, but then the industry changed, mm -hmm. and we had the boom of the go-go era. Right. And the, the idea of a S&P 500-like fund, this is before the S&P 500 in, index was even created, the index fund was even created, uh, everybody went into the go-go thing. They totally dominated. Right. Go-go funds, what is that? Funds that are created to have remarkable records, to buy junk, uh, oftentimes to buy letter stock from company founders mm -hmm. at 50 cents in the dollar mm -hmm. and put it into their portfolio at 100 cents in the dollar. Mm. This is a very easy way a to get return. good performance. Yeah. So um, after graduation, uh, what then? So I definitely wanted to be in Philadelphia if I could possibly find. And so I looked at a bank here. Uh, I was at a brokerage firm, if you can imagine me in a brokerage firm. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> and. Uh, and I looked at Wellington Fund, mm -hmm. and uh, Mr. Morgan, who I'd met at Princeton, mm -hmm. Walter L. Morgan, my great mentor, who I met when he was 50, and knew him for 50 more years. Wow. He died three months after his 100th birthday Amazing. in uh, 1998, mm -hmm. and uh, so he was a great mentor. He obviously liked me. Um, he said publicly, after I'd gone through this tremendous change in his company, um, that hiring me was the best decision he had ever made. Mm -hmm. Certainly a nice compliment to read in an article. We had a great time together. I mean, he actually did not, to be clear, spend a lot of time with me. Mm. Uh, but enough time to get, he knew what I could do and what I couldn't do. He exposed me to this little 75 person, approximately Wellington Management Company. Had 145 million in assets when I walked in the door. Mm -hmm. And it was probably the let me say the seventh largest firm in the business, hmm. and the largest balance fund. That was our stock and trade. Mm -hmm. All we offered was the balance fund in those days. But it was those were great times, happy times. He was an extraordinary man, a pillar of integrity, very much a renaissance man. Mm -hmm. He was interested in all aspects of the business. He was also an outdoorsman. He went hunting and fishing and all those kind of things. You just couldn't have found a more uh, thoughtful, well man who lived a great life. Mm -hmm. So I was glad to be a little part of it. 